Hi, I'm Keith Baker, and today I'll be talking about achievement goal orientation, and in particular, how to become more learning oriented. As usual, a couple of caveats. Firstly, I will make some simplifications, but when possible, I'll give you the gist of what the experiments point out. Secondly, if you want to know more about these comments I'll be making, refer to the references in the slides and also on the website to dig deeper. I believe the literature now is quite supportive that a person's learning orientation can be increased both acutely, which means on a given day or within a given situation, and then again, more chronically. And by that, I mean over the course of days, weeks, months, and even years. First, I wanna share with you an experiment with college students, which will demonstrate that a person's learning orientation can be increased. In this experiment, it will be done acutely, meaning during one episode or in a situation. These college students are coming to the laboratory under the concept that they will be participating in a speed reading program and they'll be testing their speed reading abilities. The students that come are regular college students and they're of all sorts. So I've schematized some students as learning oriented and some students as performance oriented. These students have their achievement goal orientation measured by way of a validated instrument and so dominantly learning oriented people are shown in green and dominantly performance oriented people are shown in yellow. These college students shown here will be randomized into two different groups. That's the randomization signal there. The first group shown here will be having a baseline reading episode where they read a couple of pages about intelligence or IQ that's framed in terms of a learning orientation. The second group will be reading a very similar passage that will be framing intelligence in terms of a performance orientation or a fixed mindset. So these are called primes. This group has been primed to view intelligence as malleable or improvable, consistent with the learning orientation. This group has been primed to think of intelligence as fixed, as in the case of a performance orientation. They then take a test on what they've read. They all do very well because they can read and learn this stuff. It's very straightforward. And then they are all given the speed reading test. And this speed reading test is very, very difficult. Matter of fact, it's so difficult that they are all given the following feedback. They performed only in the 37th percentile, which is quite a setback for a college student. They all think they're above average, so this is bad news. After they receive their feedback that they did relatively poorly on this test, they're then each given the opportunity to pick three exemplars of this list of eight. Each exemplar is schematized here. So exemplar number one, for example, scored in the 98th percentile. And if you wanted to, you could choose that exemplar and learn the strategy they used to do so well. Conversely, all the way down to the eighth place person here who did quite poorly, they scored in the 14th percentile. If you wanted to, you could learn the strategy that they used to score so poorly. The question is, which three exemplars did these people pick? So first, let's focus on the group that was primed to be performance oriented. Let's see who they chose. As a reminder, this group was told they did in the 37th percentile as shown here in the gray bar. After being primed with this performance oriented way of thinking about IQ, they chose the following on average people right by themselves. In other words, they chose other people that did poorly and asked about how they did poorly too. This to me is not an effective strategy to improve you may find out why they did badly, but that hardly helps to make, make you do better at what you do. In contrast, when we look at the students who are primed with a, a learning orientation, let's look at the, their strategies that they chose. They chose people who were specifically better than they were. They chose to see the strategies of people who performed better. So in other words, they looked up and said, you did better than me. How'd you do that? which is a strongly learning oriented approach to a setback, looking for strategies that will help you improve. So by comparison, the group that was performance oriented just looked at other people and said, how do you do bad? I did bad, not an effective strategy for improving. This, however, is a very effective strategy. Not only that, you can see that since these people are randomized to these two different groups, one's learning orientation can be increased on an acute basis. In terms of becoming more learning oriented at the individual level, I've listed a few things that one might want to focus on. If you're interested in improving uh, your degree of learning orientation, you really want to focus on self-improvement, not comparison to others. This is very much of a learning oriented approach. This is a performance oriented approach and something we're trying to get away from. 
you want to focus on effort and strategy, I'd say, and strategy as the key ingredients for improvement. You want to look for incremental improvement, not, not looking to be an Olympic athlete in one week's worth of training, but really each episode that you go into your activity, you're asking the question, how could I become just a little bit better today than I was yesterday? You want to focus on the task itself and the procedures and, and processes within the task to try and improve performance on the task. You don't want to focus on the outcome as to whether or not the task went well where the grade was high, or the performance was lauded by others. Really, it's about trying to improve and focusing on the task and the items that are important for achieving in that task itself. Each day you want to reflect on the goal of improvement and ask how you could be a little bit better even when things are going well. This is a particularly challenging one because when people do well, they tend to just revel in their success. The issue here is reflecting on the goal of improvement even when you've already performed quite well. The question isn't, are you doing well? The question is, could you be a little bit better? And then if, and then I put down when, because it will happen, we each have some of this in us. And so when a performance goal supervenes, recognize it, stop, regroup, and try and reframe it in terms of a learning oriented approach. This may take hours. It may even take days. For example, when you get a negative feedback, it may take at least a day or two to recover from the setback before you can reframe it as an opportunity for improvement or asking the question, how could I get around whatever has just given me this setback? Another approach that is helpful to improving one's learning orientation is explaining it and how it works to someone else. In terms of factors that we can influence that are in our environment and as educators, what can we do to influence or augment the degree of learning orientation in the learners? Number one, remove peer comparisons and rankings. Secondly, you want to praise people for growth, effort, and improvement. Those are things under their control and therefore something they can bring to bear on becoming better. Importantly, you do not want to praise people for, for their ability. That is a strongly performance oriented activity, praising for ability. And so you really want to not do that because that's driving a performance oriented culture. You want to use group learning environments for discussions, hearing other people's perspectives and learning from that. Critically, and I think underappreciated is the reaction to mistakes when they happen with a learning orientation. I'm not saying that we should make mistakes, but rather when they do occur, we want to learn from them and therefore we want to react to them with a strong learning orientation since errors and failures are extremely good learning tools as we'll learn about in another video. We also want to reduce the frequency of high stakes examination where one goes for the A or A plus, but really focus on learning and growth at all activities. Another strong way to send the signal of learning orientation for your culture is to welcome clarifying questions. When people ask questions and they demonstrate that they don't know the answer or don't understand something or can't do the task, respond to that in a way that demonstrates that you want to help them improve, help them clarify their thinking, help them complete the task successfully. And that sends a strong message to others in the class that learning and improving is the issue and therefore welcoming clarifying questions helps set the tone. Thanks very much for spending some time on the Expert Pathway.